Good morning, guys. Welcome to the High Jolly Camping Area, a recreation area. And as you can see, it's a little bit more dense, and there's some really cool rigs out here as well, as well as some more stealthy rigs. But we're going to start at the coolest and uh, take a little tour out here. I'm on my uh, rad wagon today because Emma's brakes are uh, on the fritz, so we'll get that squared away when we get back to Seattle. But look at this beauty. Almost looks like an Airstream camper, doesn't it? It's uh, an Avion. But uh, I think that is probably the most picturesque unit here. <laughs> and they're from Washington, which is kind of kind of fun. So let's let's uh, take some photos here. Oh yeah, she is a beauty. Beautiful rig. And we're getting plenty of solar. Uh, I think I've hit a peak of 670 watts or so today, which is not too much, but just enough. Is that a burrow? No, that's a scamp. Oh, nice scamp. Uh, if you didn't know this, the, uh, the ones with the gold lettering have the upgraded wood interior. Oh, that's a shot right there. Isn't it? So I like the birch plywood. I believe it's what they use. Uh, we only got the one with the red lettering, so it had the, uh, I don't think it was actual wood, but it was fiberglass cabinetry instead of wood cabinetry. And then a little bit of uh, kind of funky kind of compressed particle board or whatever that you'll see often. Oh, that's a neat rig. Look at that. My brakes are definitely more sensitive than Emma's. Really cool. Really good looking van. All right. Yeah, but this goes down for a little ways and we'll go ahead and loop back here. Good looking bus over there. Oh, let me get a shot of this. Oh, that's a beauty. Here. Cool esteem. <laughs> Somebody asked why I really like the little um, little white trailers, like the older trailers like this. There's something about them. They got like character, you know? We don't have, we just don't see them today this way. I really like, oh, it's an Odyssey. That's, that's pretty neat. And then we've got a Prevo back here, which, I mean, if you want a nice, luxurious rig, and technically the best of the best, that's it. I can't afford one, but if you can, look at that. That's got a nice trailer attached that matches. Some of the best paint jobs on these two. Now you guys can kind of see a little better all of the rigs that are out here. Ooh, and a nice bounder over here. And look at that big old painted rig. I like the bounder. I like that bounder a lot. Let me see. Yeah, kind of frame it with the bushes here. That's pretty neat. George had made a good point. He said, uh, he pointed out rather how um, how kind of nonchalant the uh, the e-bike is, and uh, you don't look as intimidating. You know, when you're cruising by and scoping stuff out, you don't look as intimidating on an e-bike as you might with a, a car and such, which I completely agree with. It's a fantastic tool. It's also quieter. You know, you don't look so shady, and frankly, only nerds ride e-bikes, so dorks rather <laughs> all right look at that prevo oh, i think that's a prevo let me see older unit i think that's a prevo uh, is that an mci Look at that. 
I don't know if that's a new hole or what that is, but it's beautiful. I painted, I painted a rig. I mean, that looks like a lifestyle rig, especially with that cool off-roading deal right there. Yep. Oh, there's a Balboa right there. Look at all the class seats. We got a, a Mini Winnie here, a Freedom Elite, a Chateau, a Coachman. And then an Outlook, is that what I'm saying over there? Oh, nice. Oh, cool. Oh, hey, looks similar to the uh, uh, big villa, something villa. It's like uh, the one that we photographed the other day. Alrighty, so it's not far into town, but I'm gonna ride into town because I'd like to get that shot of the class C's that I was talking about uh, with this camera. I think that'd be pretty nice. I brought some lenses as well. But you can see, uh, if I ride on the road, I don't have to deal with any of this nonsense. If I don't, though, I'm on gravel here and ah, all this crap. But if you ride in the road, then you risk. Ah, whoa, 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 ah, ah, good lord, getting hit by a car. So, Ooh. goodness gracious. So, a couple blocks down, looks like there's a landfill transfer station. Well, I've got some trash, so let's drop it off. Now I can take my backpack off. There's different hours, depending on the time of year. Sunday through Wednesday, 7.30 to 2.30, and today's Thursday, so fun. Looks like there's two bullet holes in that uh, building there. We'll still find somewhere to toss this trash, though. You know, I uh, think it was starting to take Emma's uh, front fork suspension for granted. Woo! Alrighty, back in courtside. I'm gonna skip over to the other side of the road here. Woo! Only about 10 minutes on that road. Grueling 10 minutes. I saw that there was more of a dirt path over here on the other side of the road, so I might take that. Although that doesn't look much better. There's a Winnebago Warrior. One of my favorite motorhomes ever. Oh, so this is interesting. This is the La Mesa RV spot. And I'm seeing a lot of motorhomes here. And it looks like they're bringing them all in right now. Um, I'm going to go pester somebody and ask them what's up. I want to see if uh, they're gearing up because I found out RV Country is the only dealership that's actually uh, presenting motorhomes and RVs for sale at the uh, the big tent this year. So doesn't mean that there's not stuff around, but uh, they're kind of the official and uh, only one. Um, so, ooh, that's a cool, that's a cool motorhome. Let's see what they've got here. So they're bringing things from all over uh, and they'll be up and running Monday morning. So we'll have to swing back by and, uh, and check that out. So I think that'll be pretty neat. So here is the High Jolly Monument, uh, kind of interesting. This is actually uh, what the dedication for the area that we're in, uh, parked in right now, the recreation area, that's what this is dedicated to. And this pyramid of native stone marks the resting place of High Jolly, a Greek born in Syria, also known as Philip Tidro and Haji Ali, which I kind of get the High Jolly, Haji Ali. Uh, was hired in 1857 as a camel herder in the United States Army's short-lived historic camel corps by Lieutenant Edward Beal in his expedition to chart a wagon road across New Mexico and Arizona, ending at the Colorado River. In 1861, the Civil War commenced, ending the day of the camel corps. High Jolly returned to quartzite, trying his hand at mining, packing, scouting, delivering the jackass mail, and uh, selling water to travelers. The quartzite cemetery is named in High Jolly's honor. Really neat. This is actually on uh, uh, the National Register of Historic Places. Um, he was a camel driver, packer scout, over 30 years a faithful aide to the U.S. government. Really pretty neat. Right behind the cemetery here, 
we're gonna check out these rigs over here because I don't know if it was intentional or not but there's a really cool class C layout I posted a photo of this that was taken with my phone um, I'll give it another one it's a little better I came over here because initially I noticed this holiday rambler who appears to be in pretty poor shape a little beat up here but is a that's a lot of rig that's a lot of rig an imperial uh, it's a tandem axle here uh, very very cool rig if somebody could restore it looks like it at least has good windows but you know that thing probably has some, <laughs> some pretty far way to go but let me this is what I'm talking about right here let me get get a shot right of all these uh, good looking classic class C's man this this poor holiday rambler is in bad bad shape I think the HRC HRC either stood for a holiday rambler company or holiday rambler club uh, there is something kind of interesting about it right like even I think I want to say this is probably like an 85 87 something like that but look at the camera on the back I mean they gave you the they gave you a backup camera even though the thing is significantly larger than this but uh I think that said something that says something rather you just get a shot I don't know there's something about these uh these older rigs that I don't think they should be forgotten all righty we'll swing through town kind of make a loop and then head back here's a bounder it's like a 90s bounder if I'm not mistaken nice looking rig what, if, what do you guys think I think that there is still a good another bounder very popular uh, there's a good there's a good chunk of us that want a motorhome a good sized motorhome with no slides no slides and less weight less complication less likely to leak but uh am i in the minority on that are you guys do you guys agree here's a truck camper it's a kydex no slides i'm sure uh significantly reduces the amount of weight another truck camper Arizona Department of Transportation. I believe that this, oh, yep, there we go. I think this is a substation for the, uh, yeah, the State Patrol or Highway Patrol, Arizona Highway Patrol. They do have some pretty neat cars out here, I gotta say. It's silver and a black stripe. Uh, pretty cool. But uh, I was curious because it, it seemed like the uh, Arizona, the uh, Quartzsite Police Department is pretty. It's a little larger than I would have expected. Uh, but they've got, apparently they've got enough personnel. They must generate enough taxes uh, during the, the winter time here to justify the size of the department, I'm, I, I must, I'm guessing. There's a Balboa land god. That is a good looking ring. Look at a photo of that beauty. Cool, all uh, fiberglass shell there. That's pretty neat. Huh, really cool rig. That van actually matches your outfit. I know. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> While I'm a bit partial to La Mesa RV, just because of my my good experiences here, it looks like these guys are going to be the sole. Uh, representatives for RV sales here at the show and it looks like they're still kind of filling some rigs in you can see they're getting detailed and fixed up they got uh, mobile techs out here that's a, that's a good looking rig the DX3 already sold interesting yeah, I wonder about the repairs because you would think I mean hopefully it's not a you know not too many issues going on or they don't require big parts but getting them all the way out here you gotta wonder I suppose with some things you can just run over to Phoenix and back and or you know California I think it's 10 miles from us here this is kind of a cool shot here personally I'm not a big fan of uh, vinyl graphics but I like the paint job on this Montana I think this is uh, you know legacy so that's the highest end 
Montana you can get. I've been disappointed by their their uh, roofs personally from what we've seen. It's a shame because I think they look so cool. They're such nice looking rigs. This one has kind of a unique, I've been in this one before, kind of a unique setup here. Um, but when you walk right in, you can see, you walk in and then there's, it's just flat here, but I, I guess it really opens up here, but it's got a rear kitchen, um, which is not bad. It's not bad. It's still on a slide, so you wouldn't be able to access a whole lot with a slide in, but not, that's not terrible. I don't know why this had to be two levels here. I don't know if you guys can tell. Um, I'm in love with that, but... A lot of staples. I don't, uh, you know, I, I like the... See, I like the dark gray wood in here. I like the black or dark brown. I think it's black. That's uh, dark brown. But I don't like this. This is... It's very intense. I don't know. No, that's kind of interesting. I like the uh, the living room in the front. I like their showers too, but I like what they have the living room in the front. Those are my favorite just because it seems like a dedicated place to hang out, like a full separate room. The elevation change really makes the rig feel, you know, feel different there. So this one's kind of unique looking. This is the ST391DL. It's a solitude by Grand Design. And I noticed like a shorter slide here, huge windows here, big old rig. But check out this. So you've got your your bedroom at the front here. Of course, big old closet. Nice shower. Nice one-piece shower. That's all right. Metal sink. You've got a kind of living room, sort of a smaller living room, kitchen area. Uh, and this is sort of what I'm talking about. When If you combine the living room and the kitchen, you know, it's, it, it, uh, it, it really makes it feel bigger. But also, look at the... So you've got an area up here for sleeping. That's a big old area, but you also have a bedroom in here. And then a second bathroom. And a rear door, which is kind of cool. So a lot of amenities in here. If you're full time and with kids, this is definitely one you want to check out. So I think this is one of my favorite layouts just from like a, a flow kind of perspective. I don't think this would work well if you had kids and such, of course. Um, you do have a smaller kitchen when you walk in. And then an, an eating area, obviously, again, smaller unit, um, but a whole lot of storage space in here. But this front living room, this is kind of what I was talking about. I like this front living room with the televator here. It's kind of, uh, kind of nice. Why am I hearing creaking? It's brand new. Um, this one's pretty nice. I don't like the, the darker tones. Yeah. Interesting. This wall seems solid. A little bit of, hmm. I like, you know, I like the extra light up here because we've we've been in, in some of these that are just very, very dark. Some of these will also, in the same layout, have an extra storage here. They give you storage over here as well. Um, I feel like this bathroom doesn't need to be as large as it is. I don't know. I don't know. This is interesting. You got a washer dryer prep. Nice shower, really nice shower. I don't know if it needs to be as large as it is. Like there's kind of, like this this cabinet right here doesn't necessarily need to be here. I don't know, I don't know. Hmm, I like the floors though. What fun. So this is a Forest River Wildwood Heritage Glen and it's kind of similar to a lot of the destination trailers that we've seen. They want 76,000 for it. Uh, a lot of the, the destination trailers that we've seen with the lofts, and you don't see this a lot in the fifth wheels that I've seen. Kind of similar, but uh, it does have a front living room area, which is kind of nice. I like that. Compared to the last one we were just in, obviously, this is going to feel kind of similar. I think it's more of a budget price point unit. You can see there's no cabinetry here, for example. Uh, big living room. Really big living room. Televator, of course. But there's kind of a unique part of this, and it's actually back here. There's some fit and finish things that I'm not a fan of in this guy. Uh, for example, the wallpaper already coming off. That just bugs me. But, all right, we've seen the shower in one of the destination units. Uh, that's pretty nice. I wish they would have given you a, a nicer fan. And I don't know what this is all about. Uh, 
little, again, fit and finish things that, uh, hmm. But you actually have a loft in here. There is that loft. We've seen these on the destination trailers, right? And just like with those units, we have, we have a rear bedroom. Now with this guy, the door is not in here. There's a window in here. Uh, and with a lot of the destination units, you also have like a washer dryer prep space right in here and all that good stuff. Uh, they just give you a little bit more, you know, I think that's kind of a weight thing if I had to guess. I do like the valance material. I think they're kind of cute. A lot of button here, this whole thing. Very interesting, right? In terms of features and the second door, if I didn't mention this already, is right here. So pretty, pretty interesting. Not a lot of uh, eating space for the family. I'm back out here in the diesel pushers, guys, and I mean, I risked my life to get here right on that side road. I might as well take advantage. And uh, you know, I haven't really, haven't really done any detail shots here, but I, I really like the the patterns I'm seeing. You know, again, I think that's something that Integra does really well is that design swoop. I mean, if I had to pick between these taillights and these, these are good. I would actually pick these. I just like they're simpler. They're a little simpler. You know, it, it will, it will just, to me, it'll just outlast and uh, look nicer longer. There's a little detail that I really like. Hmm. Not really one that matters, but I don't know, I'm having fun with it. Just a couple shots here. You know, I really like, really like this shot right here with the, the, the rim. When you think of a diesel, you think of these these uh, big old tires, right? It's kind of a cool shot. Ooh, electric bike. A lot of electrics out here. I've heard they're supposed to have a, uh, they're supposed to have a booth. Oh, we were in this one. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Watch your heads. We are in this one. The lights are on this time, though. Still feels very dark. Yeah. So I think we've already toured this one. The uh, Armada 40M, it's a diesel pusher. One thing I'd like to see more of, and what do you guys think about this? I'd like to see more, ah, again, I am so sorry guys. Ah, watch your head. Whew. Anyways, I'd like to see more bunk models. You know, what do you, what do you guys think? Cause in the diesel pushers, you don't see bunk models. We're getting a bunk model. And not because we have kids, you know, like you could put a bunk room in the back I and mean, there is a rig. Um, God, I forget which fleet one it is. They did a really nice job with it, but I believe it has a bunk room in the back. I'd love to see one tour it for you guys. Hmm. And, and I'd also like to see more magnets. Is that a thing? Do you guys think that's a, it's a whole deal? These cabinets seem pretty good. It's not obvious to me these are put together with staples. This looks really nice. The cabinet, yeah, the uh, cabinetry here. But I gotta say, I don't know what the heck is going on with this. This, what do you guys think about this? Is that weird? That's weird, right? Hmm, is this bad? I don't know. I don't care about this bathroom. Like, I. Ugh. Give me one good bathroom, one really good bathroom right in the middle. You make my make me bunks and uh, closet space, right? Um, and of course you do have to have access to the rear engine, of course, and all that good stuff. I don't know, I don't know, I'd like to see that. I do really like this cockpit though. One other thing I really like is, is, uh, so this, I really like this. I don't know if it, I hope it lights up. It, it does light up, so it lights up for night. They have two of them, I really like that. 
Um, and this door, like I'm, hold on, let me, let me separate this door. Right there. That is, you can see how far I wait, like my hands are uh, here, right? That is a beefy door. Uh, and that's something I've actually noticed. Let's go take a look at the vacation rig again. You say, Joel, why are you doing this? You freaking nerd. Why are you going around? And we go, well, why are you going with me, guys? But let's take a look at the door on the uh, the vacationer because it is a significant step up over our uh, esteem, I've noticed. And I took a look actually last night at our door, but the vacationer is much better. Oh man, okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna skip this opportunity here. Just a little corner shot, a little corner shot. You'll know what it is. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Just a little detail shot. Anyways, so this door, I was feeling this door, and, and you guys can't feel it, but it's it's heavy, right? Now, when we get back to the esteem, I'm going to show you. Oh, how do we? Oh, goodness. How do we? <laughs> so I'm an idiot. So there's a little stopper here. I thought this you had to interface with this. I kind of like the way this... This feels here. Uh, this will keep the screen door closed, for example, but you actually just pull it. It's just a magnet. It's magnetic and it makes good sense. So you can, you can lock it in place and then unlock it, of course, right like that. Anywho, so just looking at this door, I mean, look at the thickness. I mean, that's, that's a pretty thick boy. That's a pretty thicky thick boy right there. And so the hinge has a little bit of friction here, right? Uh, you can use four, four hinge points there, but right, that's, that's a lot of, that's a lot of door. Uh, when it's closing and opening, like they're, they're beefy. They're beefy. Also notice a little, uh, little deal up there. Kind of interesting, but yeah, that's, that's really interesting. I mean, that's a, I don't know. You guys might be able to hear that. You might not, uh, but you got to take my word for it. If you can't hear it, let's, when we get back to the, uh, when we get back to the esteem, remind me and I will, go ahead and, and do a comparison because the esteem just feels a lot more hollow I, I you'll see what i mean look at this guy it's a uh, old southwind or bound or probably a southwind there but when you get a little sun fading on your rig and it's kind of that beige color you don't like it anymore just give her a paint job gray is pretty uh, pretty neutral neutral enough but that's not what i'm here to show you Look at this beauty. Oh man, beautiful Prevo. That's where it's at. <laughs> beautiful Liberty coach. Wow. Got a toy hauler, but also check out those solar panels. Got solar all over. Isn't that cool? Why not? As long as you can uh, park it the right way, right? That's pretty cool. Well, that's a nice, nice paint job on that. We're back here at the fire department. And I'm gonna take this path over here. Because I hope that it'll be a little better. See, these tires are not so uh, forgiving of bumps as Emma's bike is. I mean, it's not the worst, but really the ideal machine would be the Rad Rover and we rode the Rad Rover 6. That thing was amazing. I mean, and I, I'm telling you, like, what, <laughs> even in Seattle, we rode over train tracks and as many potholes as we possibly could. That thing just soaks up the bumps and asks for more. Uh, I'm not gonna trade my bike at all. I love my bike, but, uh, but if Emma ever has to get another bike, you know, I'm, I'm gonna start looking at the Rad Rover for her. That way I can ride it, ugh, times like these. Oh, sh ugh, oh sh Ooh, what is this? Nonsense. Oh, wash, oh, oh Yeah, Lord. I don't know this is much safer than the dang road. Well, I don't know if you guys can tell, but the road is up there and the valley goes down here on this trail. Um. This bike is not designed for this. I don't know that I'm going to be doing this one again. Oh, oh, goodness. Oh, Nelly. Wah. Also, I still have three bars. That's pretty good. Oh, oh, 
How did I not eat there? God. Woo. Oh, Lord. I'm going to break my something or other. Good Lord. Goodness gracious. Woo. Whoa. Whoa. Alrighty. Woo. All right. Well, I made it out alive. Oh, man. Joel, you could walk it. This bike is so awkward, I probably hurt myself more just walking it. Also, this is a real test of the GoPro stabilization. Woo! Which, I gotta say, ah, ah, I have no doubts in. Ah. Oh, man. Woo! Well, I think we're almost there. I think we're almost there. I see some motor. I see some RV. Ow! Oh no, goodness. Ah, ah, rocks are not my friend. If your wheels slip off the rocks and everything. Whew, and this is a long bike. It's not designed for this Sonson. Ah, ah. Right on this side. Man. So anyways, we're almost there. Ah, we're almost there. Now we're back to the high jolly 14 day camping area registered with host. Cattle guard, and we're back. Oh. The, uh, be advised, the roads out here are not not super well paved. Uh, kind of interesting, uh, interesting bigger rigs down there. But all right, let's go ahead and lock up, and we'll do a comparison of the uh, a steam door just to kind of show you what I'm talking about. All righty, so here's the door, and uh, just a good comparison, I think. We look at this and you can see it's kind of hard to tell but definitely less fiberglass and that's not the end of the world but when you kind of it's definitely a different different sound you know when we're looking at like the bounder the holiday rambler vacationer it's pretty clear that's a little bit thicker fiberglass which is a always a good thing better insulation right they're using that fiberglass on the door um, on the back of the aluminum uh, lower doors things like that so um, and then of course when you add in like dual pane windows and things like that the insulation is much much better so those sorts of things kind of matter to me they may not matter to you and you know that's not to say that you know this unit's a, a bad unit by any means. I think it's, a, it's pretty good. Uh, you know, the vacationer is just a little bit better. So pros and cons, there's nothing wrong with this, but there's also, you know, if, if you're paying the money, which one do you want? You know, I think a lot of people just really want like a, a, a quick and easy answer as to like what's good and what's bad. And I would love to give folks an answer, but it also kind of depends on what, what you care about. This is kind of like, for me, this is sort of the minimum of what I'm willing to pay for at this price or at the price that we got it at. Uh, but when you start paying more than this, I want more than this, right? So, um, and it's all, it's all contextual, but definitely let me know your guys' thoughts as well. Um, for somebody full-timing, more insulation is always better. Thank you for watching, guys. Hopefully you had some fun uh, scooting around with me. <sighs> I'm going to enjoy the rest of the evening, let the dogs run around a little bit, and take care, guys. Bye. Mm -hmm.